Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Schneider's Golf. My name is Eric Schneider, and today we have something extremely disturbing to show you. Holy crap! I didn't realize it was in such bad shape. I mean, it's been sitting for like a year, but that is disgusting. That is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I don't even want to have my hands anywhere near that coolant. On today's video, we are going to suck that coolant off the top of the water, and we're going to replenish this coolant with some quali cam so that it smells nice, and so that I don't die from something that's growing inside this coolant. Okay, but for reals, that is terrifying. I'm, I'm not even gonna take any chances of getting any of that on me. It's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of like having a really messy house and posting pictures online. That's kind of how I feel right now. Like I'm really I'm disappointed in myself that I let it get this far and this bad. But we're gonna fix it. All right, one more, one more little visual. I mean, do I even dare? Do I even dare? I don't know if I were to mix it, if it would. CNC mills have come quite a long ways since 1998 when this arrow was made. Now they have what's called separator tanks and oil skimmers. And they actually take that thin layer of oil and they skim it off the top and they put it into like a little container and it gets rid of that. Now, since this is somewhat antiquated, it doesn't feature that technology. So we are going to take shop vac and just barely hose down on that top layer and try and suck that up off. Oh my gosh, my shop vac is frozen to the ground. Like legit, legit, I cannot get my shop vac. It is frozen to the ground. Oh, oh good. That's nice. There's uh, who knows what in here. This shop vac might be done. I don't know. We'll try it out. The fan in the shop vac is totally frozen. So we're gonna leave this here. We will resume this job whenever the shop vac unfreezes. All right, it's the next morning. Let's see if it'll turn on. Fingers crossed. Let's get started. This could get really gross really fast. some progress we still have some gross stuff on top but it's a little bit better I think once we mix this in that's mostly quality cam uh, I think <laughs> this is by no means the fix for this if you're gonna do this right you would empty the whole thing rinse it out put new coolant in I'm not gonna do that quite yet because it's winter here and I just don't want to deal with the coolant we need to do the other side look at these we need to move these out of the way. Pull out the chip bin. Oh no. I just had a bunch of chips sit down on top of the coolant. That is not what we wanted. Mmm, look at that. Doesn't look quite as bad, all frothy. All right, we're gonna dump this in here. This is my waste barrel. How about a pex cutter to the rescue? Nice. Nice and easy. Well, that is exhibit A of what we didn't want to do right there.
Well, the final part is here. We're going to try and get as many chips up to this end as we can. We're gonna scrape them up the wall. We're gonna dump them in this blue bucket. Hopefully we'll have a little cleaner coolant when we're done. So this side doesn't feel too bad. Quite a bit more than I would have thought. We're gonna pull these up to the side. Wow, that's a lot more than I thought that would be in here, to be honest. part of this job and getting the coolant out with the vacuum was worse. All right, I pulled this chip bin back out just for ease of access. I'm gonna test this coolant really quick. I've kind of stirred it up to try and get a good estimate on what the mix ratio is. The way we are gonna do this, the way we're gonna do this is with our handy dandy refractometer. Now, what this does is you put a little bit of coolant right here, flip this over, hold it up to the light, and it shows you the concentration level of the coolant. It's kinda neat. If you look right now at our refractometer, you can see that there's no line, no line inside the refractometer. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of coolant on it and you'll see a little line up here. That needs to be probably at about a seven. So I'm gonna mix some coolant in here. We'll get it up just a little bit higher. I think the amount I've got will probably get us to about a seven. That'll keep the machine from rusting and keep the bacteria count down. And uh, then I'm gonna call my coolant guy and I'll probably have him bring me up another five gallon bucket or two. And we'll clean this all out in the spring and do it the right way. All right, I'm gonna dump the coolant in over on this side because the coolant pump's over here. It'll suck it through the system, it'll come out of the nozzles and it will cascade down into both of the tanks. That's quite a bit. So we'll mix this in really quick. Get it kind of flowing in our tank here. Stir it up. See if we can't push a little bit over to the other side. Still got some floaties, but we'll deal with it. Let's do another quick refractometer test and see what our levels look like. All right, just some on there. All right, you can see the line pretty good there. Just below 10. It's probably reading just a hair too concentrated because we don't have all the water in yet. And we dumped it mostly on this side, but you can see how the level has changed through the refractometer. I think that'll get me through until my coolant guy can come and take a look at it. Probably at least get me through the winter. It's not super pretty, but it'll get the job done. The arrow obviously hasn't been running for a while, so this coolant didn't get a whole ton of use. This was kind of a gross video, but it's part of the machining process, and coolant is a very essential component of machining. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something new. Keep your coolant tanks clean, keep your noses clean, get out and play some golf, and I'll see you next time. Take care.